Thank you everyone for joining me today to learn a little bit more about SmartView, about its history, and why we decided to make a change to the way it's structured from a sales and a pricing perspective. My name is Abby Cooper. I'm the sales manager at E1. And if you need uh, anything at all, or if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I will be having a short Q&A section at the very end of the call, but just due to the duration of our meeting and the number of participants, I would ask that you could just send your questions to me um, via the chat functionality. It's going to be a lot easier to, uh, to manage that way. So today what we are going to do is we're going to um, cover the overview of our SmartView changes. We'll see SmartView in action. And if we have time, we'll go ahead and spend a few minutes just running through the um, Q&As that you might have. Now, I know we have only 10 minutes of time, so we'll go ahead and breeze through here. So some of the changes that we made um, are really around the pricing and the structure of SmartView. Now, as you know, SmartView is our tool that makes working with SmartList a whole lot easier. Prior to just a week ago, we actually sold SmartView as two separate products, SmartView Internal and SmartView External. And what that meant was that SmartView Internal gave you access to your Smart List from the menu structure while you were logged into GP. And SmartView External meant you could access it from a separate desktop application without ever taking up a GP user license. Now, we heard overwhelming feedback from partners and customers alike just honestly sharing with us that, uh, you know, they wanted this uh, functionality, they wanted it all in one. Um, and not um, from a partner perspective, uh, they didn't really want to sell this as two separate products, and customers didn't want to purchase two separate products. They wanted it all, again, as I mentioned, in one. So with that in mind, we combined the two from a sales and a pricing perspective, and we've now called them SmartView. So we've taken the internal and the external off the name, and we're just calling it SmartView. And what this does is it gives users access to SmartView both inside of GP and without taking up the GP user license and accessing it right from the desktop application, but at one simple price point. Now the top five features, or the top six, I should say, features of SmartView are really the ability to see your list without logging into GP, using an unlimited number of filters, exporting to Excel, seeing your totals to screen, seeing those lists in fractions of a second, and opening multiple smart lists. So let's go ahead and dive in and see SmartView in action. First thing I'll do is launch SmartView from my desktop application, and I'll go ahead and log into SmartView. And I'm using a username and password that is available for SmartView, and it's not my GP username or password. In fact, I don't even have to have a GP user license in order to be a SmartView user um, when I'm accessing it from the desktop application. I simply need to have my security mapped to a GP user or role um, that would match up with the list that I'm allowed to see. So if you have folks that you want to give access to smart lists, but maybe you don't want them to have access to payroll lists, that's just fine. You can actually set up security in such a way that you can give them access to only the list that you'd like. So we have our list on the left hand side under our tree view. Let's go ahead and pull up an account transaction here. Now we've pulled up our account transactions list and if you look at the very bottom left hand side of the screen, you can see that I've just pulled up a thousand account transactions in 0.6 seconds. Now let's actually pull the max number of records that I have in this demo system and it'll wait just a few moments and you can see we've just now pulled up over 22,000 account transactions in just over three seconds. So if you compare that to SmartList, you're talking about quite a time savings. You know, um, if you were pulling this list up in SmartList, you'd probably still be going and, and grabbing a coffee. So let's go ahead and let's pull up another list. Let's take a look at our sales line items list. And since I have my list selected, I'll actually move to the top left and I'll hide my list on the left so I can have as much room as I'd like. And let's add a few more columns on the right hand side. Now these are all of the columns that I can add to the list as they pertain to the list I've selected. And let's add, how about our sales territory and salesperson. And let's also do an account number and maybe a date here as well. 
Now I'll hide my column view so you can see those new columns that I just added. And if I want to move those columns around, I'm just going to grab the column header and drag and drop the column where I'd like it to, um, to live, essentially. So if I wanted to move my sales account number up there, and maybe I actually want my customer number here, I can go ahead and drag and drop those columns. Now let's say I wanted to add a filter. Let's filter out all of my blank salespeople. And you can see I'm just using my filter icon at the top right hand side of the column header. I've added a filter there and maybe I only want to look at my invoices and orders so I'll add another filter. Now you can see when I did that we have a excuse me a filter ribbon down at the very bottom. On the bottom right if I select edit filter I can go ahead and add as many filters as I'd like. You can see the two I've already added, but I can just keep going and going and going with those filters. I'm not limited to just four filters like I was with SmartList. Here I can do an and, an or, I can do a not and, a not or. I can even add a condition or a group to this set of filters if I'd like. Now let's say I'd like to group or subgroup some of this data. I can go ahead and I can drag and drop my column header to the top. So maybe I want to group by my salesperson, and how about I want to do another subgrouping by my item number. Just to give you an idea, idea, we'll move to the top to our home tab, and we'll hit our collapse all option right in the middle. So let's say I wanted to look at what Gary was doing, and I wanted to see all of the open invoices and orders that are out there for Gary for this particular item number. I can just open that up. And if I right click on the footer, I can even do a min, a max, a sum, or a count as well. Now let's go ahead and expand all this data and we'll move to our top left to our options and let's turn on our find panel. Now with this find panel, I can go ahead and I can do a search across the entire report. So it's going to pull back any of the data that applies to uh, my search that I just did across any of the columns that are available. So you can see here within this 333, I um, have that within two separate columns. I'll just go ahead and turn off, um, or excuse me, I'll go ahead and clear that column. And I'll actually turn off my find panel and turn on my auto filter row. And now what I want to do is I want to search for a specific item that starts with phone just on this column. So I'll go ahead and search for that and do a tab and it's actually going to apply a filter for me uh, just on that column. So if I went ahead I could go ahead and delete that filter and you can see I'm back to my basic report. Now if we look toward the top right hand side we have some options available to us. We can export this to Excel, CSV, or PDF. So let's pick Excel. And let's go ahead and give this a name and hit save and you'll see that we are exporting to Excel in fractions of a second. We've kept our grouping and our subgrouping. We've also kept our column headers at the top as well. Now if I wanted to, I can move back into Smart View and I could grab a few, let's actually just grab three um, of these lines and we'll do a Control C and a Control V and we're all actually gonna just copy and paste these right to Excel and when I do so it's actually copying and pasting over my column header as well. Now I did this just the other day I was looking at some of my reports because I use SmartView for all of my sales reports and I was looking at a number of those and I saw a few items that I had questions on so I just copied and pasted right from my SmartView report into actually an email in Outlook and sent that to my accounts team to take a look at. So a great way to just grab that specific data that you need. Now one thing you'll also notice that I should have pointed out a little bit earlier is that I have footers at the bottom, so I have my totals right to screen on any of my um, numeric columns. So you can see I'm getting a total without having to export to Excel at all. Now if I move back up to the top and I move toward the left hand side, You'll see my add option. So if I'd like to add this as a favorite, we'll call this Abby's fave for now. And I can assign it to my users and my companies. And I'll hit save here. And if I turn my list back on, you can see I now have my favorite smart list. So if I was looking at the basic smart list, you can see it doesn't have my columns or my grouping or my subgrouping. And here I can come back to a list that I've made just for me as a user because it's kept my grouping, my subgrouping, my columns, my filters, etc. Now, if I wanted to, 
I could go ahead and actually open up multiple instances of Smart View. So maybe I have a smart list that I'm sitting in all day and I don't want to exit out of that smart list to look up another one. I can just open another instance of smart view and I can just pull up another smart list if I'd like to. And now I have multiple smart lists open through smart view. Now last thing to mention to you here, if you sit in GP all day and you're saying, well, I actually just want to see my list in GP still, you can go ahead and you can take a look at your lists um, right within GP. So if I wanted to look at my sales transactions list, for example, I can still pull that up and I have the same functionality in GP. The only difference is when I'm um, accessing SmartView from right inside of GP, I can actually double click and utilize my go-tos. So I can pull up a GP window in this case. I know I'm coming to the tail end of our time together. I promised you only 10 minutes. Let me just share a couple more things with you. If you'd like to see an extended demo, um, I actually do demos every Friday at 1 o'clock Central Time that take about a half an hour. So if you'd like to join us, just go ahead and head to our website, to the events page of our website, and you can register for any of those demos that you'd like to attend. If you are a SmartView internal customer and you'd like to upgrade, now's the time to do so. You can do that upgrade for a $500 one-time fee, and I've shared the promo code on the screen as well. If you're saying, you know what, I want to uh, dive into SmartView myself, I want to try it out, you can go ahead and do so and you can download it for um, 30 days, or excuse me, you can download it and use it for 30 days and download that right from our website. You don't need trial keys at all. Again, if you have any questions or any comments, if you'd like to take any of your questions offline and just discuss them one-on-one, -on -one, I'd be more than happy to help you. Please feel free to reach out to me at my email address above or um, via my phone, and um, I'd be more than happy to, to chat with you. Again, thank you so much for your time today. I know it's very valuable, and I appreciate you spending time learning more about SmartView. Thanks again, and have a great day.